Good morning. Today we'll see the demonstration of the torsional pendulum. Here, so this is a torsional pendulum. We have a wire attached between two chucks. Length of the wire, what we are using here is this much, but we can measure. This material is having an elastic constant. Elasticity, as you know, it is the nature of that body because of which the body go back to its original condition when a deforming force is removed. So here we are seeing the torsion of this wire. Torsion means if one end of this body is fixed and a tangential force is applied to the other end, body gets sheared. So here you are going to measure the shear modulus. There is a modulus of rigidity. So the aim of the experiment is to find out the modulus of rigidity of this material. Modulus of rigidity is a constant for a material. Also, you have an irregular body, a body which is not having a specific shape. Moment of inertia of this irregular body also can be determined using this experiment. For this we are given a specific length of the wire, it is a uniform wire, so radius is constant. Two regular bodies are given. Regular body is advantage. See if I take this rectangular body. This rectangular body I can suspend here at this end because in a pendulum there should be a heavy mass attached at this end. Then only the body oscillates. So when you attach this about say this axis, if I am attaching this rectangular body about this axis, the pendulum is like this. Now the pendulum is stretched. So the body is having a moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of this specific body about this axis, that is along the lung perpendicular, the breadth. If I fix it in this direction, it becomes perpendicular to the length. So in this case, moment of inertia is a constant. And that moment of inertia of this body about this axis, I can find out from its dimensions. Suppose if M is the mass of this body and B is the breadth of the body, then moment of inertia, moment of inertia about this axis m b squared by 12. So when you have the axis perpendicular to the breadth, moment of inertia is given by m b squared by 12. So mass of the body is given, breadth is given. So easily I can calculate the moment of inertia. Same way, if the body is suspended along the perpendicular to the length in this direction, then the moment of inertia will be m into l squared by 12, mass and length required. If this axis is chosen, that is the body is fixed perpendicular to the plane, then the moment of inertia will be m into l squared plus b squared by 12. That means in this regular body, we can calculate the moment of inertia knowing its dimensions. Same way in a circular body, this is a circular body. If I take an axis like this, if the wire is fixed in this direction, moment of inertia I can calculate using the mass of this body, say m1 into radius m r square by 2, moment of inertia of the circular disk perpendicular to the plane. If this axis is chosen, then the moment of inertia will become m1 r squared m r squared by 4. This is along the diameter. So this also is a regular body, this is a regular. So using two regular bodies and using its moment of inertia about different axis, we can find out the moment of inertia, I mean uh, we can find out the 
rigidity modulus of the wire. We have the equation for the rigidity modulus like this. If n is the modulus of rigidity of the material of the wire, then n can be calculated as 8 by L by R raised to 4 into I by D squared. 8 by L is the length of the wire what we select. Initially we can fix the length. R is the radius of the wire. I moment of inertia of the specific body about which axis you suspend according to that. T is the time period. The time period we can measure with the help of the stop block. So if I press this point, now it is reset to zero. It is starting from zero. If I start, clock runs. I will be getting this is minute. This is second. This is one by hundredth of second. Now it is nine points. So when a specific number of oscillations are completed, see ten oscillations. If I stop this, I will be getting what is the time required for that specific number of oscillations. From that, I can calculate what is the period. Period, as you know, it is the time taken for one oscillation. Okay. So, this, if you see this equation, N is a constant for the material. 8, L, pi are constant. L and R are constants as long as we do not change the length and radius of the wire. Then, this i by t squared should be a constant. i by t squared is a constant. This is what we are going to determine in this experiment, i by t squared. So, different axis we will select, accordingly we will calculate what is i by t squared. In this specific case, I have put the axis perpendicular to the bed. So, the case is this. So, I have the moment of inertia i. I can calculate the value of the moment of inertia using its dimensions. Then I will make a small oscillation. If I little bit twist to this body 20-25 degree and leave it, it gives clear oscillation. To count the period we, and we have to count the oscillations also for that we can use this reference point. So, when this reference point come to one point, say one extreme here, if I start the stop, it will go to the other side and come back. Now, it is completing one oscillation. This way, I can count the time taken for 20 oscillation or 10 oscillation. Here, we will go for 10 oscillation. Say, I am resetting the clock to zero. When it comes to this end, I stop. Start it. So, now it is one, two, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. For 10 seconds, it has taken 32 10 oscillations, it is taking 32 seconds. This is the time for 10 oscillations. This I can take 2 3 trials. One more trial I can go for, and I can find out what is the mean of that mean time. This is for 10 oscillations. So, mean time by 10 will give me the period time for one oscillation. I can calculate what is i by t squared because I have i value using this equation m v squared by 12 I can calculate what is i time taken for 10 oscillation 2 trials are taken mean of that divided by 10 will give me the period i by t squared I can get. Same way I will fix this body about the other axis say now this body I can fix along a different axis. I have selected perpendicular to the length like this. Now it is perpendicular to the length. As you know L is more than the breadth. So M L squared by 12 the present moment of inertia will be more than the previous one. So this is the axis. 
I have the second one. So this is m into v squared by 2. Now I have i is equal to m into l squared by 2. So again, I can bring it to rest first. Set a small oscillation. Reset the clock to 0. When it comes to one extreme point, I will start the stop clock here. Started. We will go to the other extreme and come back. So now it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can see here, now it has taken 48 seconds. I is more, so time also is more. Once again, if you do near to 48, only I will be getting. I can go for the mean divided by 10 will be the period. Again, I will calculate i by t squared. So, i increased, t also increases. i by t squared remains the same. Same way, I can fix use the third axis perpendicular to the plane. That will give me m into l squared plus b squared by 12. So, again, i increased. So, further there will be an increase in the period, but i by t squared remains the same. Same way, I can use the second body, circular body. Circular body, if I fix it about this plane, I will be getting I as m into r squared by 2. This way I have to fix it. I have to rotate and find out what is the period for 10 oscillation, 2 trials, mean, period, t by 10 and i by t squared. Another plane for the circular body like this. Along the diameter, I will be getting m r squared by 4 as the moment of inertia. Again, I will go for i by this. So, I have used three planes, <coughs> three axes for a rectangular body, two axes for the circular body, totally five. All these five values of i by t squared will be near. I will take the mean of this i by t squared. This i by t squared value, I can substitute in this equation. Length of the wire can be measured, radius can be measured. So, I will be getting the modulus of rigidity of this wire. Unit for this is root and per meter squared. First part is over. <coughs> Second part, we are given with this irregular shaped body. That means, I do not know. What is the moment of inertia? I cannot calculate the moment of inertia from its dimensions, but I can do the experiment and find out what is the moment of inertia. In this case, what I do is I already calculated what is the constant value of i by t squared for this wire length and this radius. Without changing this wire length and the radius, so for the same material, if I suspend any other body, then the new i by t squared, suppose if I mark it as i alpha by t alpha squared, that also should be equal. So, what I do is I will suspend this irregular body about any one plane. So, in this case, Because if I suspend like this, now I have the plane perpendicular to the surface of the body. I will calculate what is the time for 20 oscillation or 10 oscillation. I will repeat it. So, say time for 10 oscillation T1, T2, average time I will take. Then this 
time by 10 will give me the periods I represented as I T alpha. I can go for T alpha squared. Already I know what is the I by T squared value, the mean value. So here I alpha I have to find out, that is T alpha I know T alpha squared. So I alpha I can write as I by T squared into T alpha squared. What I have to do is only to find out what is the period of oscillation for this particular case. So for this specific wire, the modulus of which it is a constant that we have measured and for this particular axis of this irregular body, moment of inertia also I can calculate using this equation. That is the experiment. Thank you.